How to start calisthenics at any age. Beginner workout. Five foundational exercises to start your calisthenics journey. Pull-ups, press-ups, dips, L-sit, chin-ups. Pull, push, hinge and hold. These exercises will provide you with a strong base for more advanced moves. And it's a great standalone workout when performed in a circuit. These progressions are for absolute beginners to anyone wanting to up their game. Regardless of your starting level, these moves and workout will give you a great start to your calisthenics journey. Perform this workout two to three times a week with a day's active rest in between. On active rest days, perform gentle cardio, jogging, cycling, skipping, swimming, walking, and or do a leg workout, body weight or weights. Don't rush the progressions. This is not a race. Start by picking one that you are comfortable performing. Perform each progression slowly with good form to develop strength and technique. Only move to the next progression when you have reached the required number of reps or time with good form. Here's a sample workout. Rest 60 seconds between moves to recover your strength. Rest two minutes between circuit rounds. Remember, you are building strength here, not cardio endurance. Important, the only person you need to challenge or compare against is you. If you're not feeling it, skip that day. Don't rush or force it. That's when injuries occur, believe me. And above all, enjoy the journey. The, uh, the warm-up exercise is really important to, to do this, guys. We've got to get those muscles, joints, ligaments uh, warm before we do any exercise. And starting off with some gentle arm circles, backwards and forwards. I'm assuming you've done your five minutes of warm-up cardio, some gentle running, jogging, um, some skipping, cycling, etc. Now, after you've done the arm circles, grab yourself a piece of dowel, a, a piece of, uh, of wood, a, a towel will do, anything long and straight, a pole and just gently over the top, just to loosen out those shoulder and back muscles. We're not straining here, so keep your arms your arms really wide, don't force it. And then once it becomes a bit more comfortable, um, bring your hands um, closer together. That's it. Come on, Marky. That's it, boy. Uh, put that down. Um, alternatively, you can go and use um, one of the resistance bands. And the resistance bands are things that we're going to be using throughout this tutorial. Again, keep them at, uh, at arm's length to start with, nice and wide. But the advantage with these is they will stretch according to your body shape. And then you can bring them in to add a little bit more resistance once you've, you've warmed up, as you'll see me doing here, over the top. And you're actually stretching out the muscles at the same time. A bit more dynamic than just using a, a solid pole. Um, that's it. Come on, boy. And then wrap it round your chest, loosen out the chest. Try not to wrap it around your neck. I've done that a couple of times. You don't want to strangulate yourself at this point. That wouldn't be good for uh, the workout. And then bring them down behind your, your neck, uh, your back rather, like that. And that's a rather good um, exercise, simulating the, the muscles used for pull-ups. Then a few gentle movements, arm circles. Then grab yourself something solid. Um, I'm using one of the, um, the parallel bars I use for dips. And to just do some standing press-ups. Again, we're just trying to, to work out the, the chest muscles, back muscles in a very gentle way, warm them up, make sure that the surface you're on is steady, unlike you see me doing here, not a great example, sorry about that. <laughs> there we go, place that back. Now we can uh, move on to the rings. If you don't have rings, maybe you've got TRX, you don't have TRX, find yourself a bar, table, something of that ilk, um, position your feet not too far back. Again, this is meant to be gentle at this point, so some standing press-ups on the rings again just to loosen out those chest muscles triceps um, give yourself get yourself into the zone and then be moving out your, your arms and your shoulders in, in all sorts of ways just again be careful at this point you're not you don't want to over strain you want to kill the workout before you start again we're just trying to loosen things out here get things warm get the blood flowing resources flowing etc 
Now we'll uh, turn the things around. Again, foot position such that it's you're not too steep so that you're pulling nice and easy, slowly, no jerky movements. That's it. Oh, you can see some sunshine there. A rare glimpse of British sunshine. Happens about once or once or twice a year and just happened to pick the day that we had the sunshine. Okay, so now we can just go on to um, a basic hang, which just before we start the lap pulls. If you can't do the hang, put your feet on the floor, just hold your arms and, and, and as much as you can um, support yourself with your weight. Now we're not pulling from our arms here, we're pulling from our lats, those uh, muscles behind um, the shoulder blades. So pull up gently, that's it. Just loosen them out, great now. And then we're moving on to the wrist loosening exercises. These really necessary. If you're gonna be doing moves involving your, your wrist flat on the floor, like the press ups, uh, planches, all that kind of thing. Very important to get the, uh, get the, the wrist loose back and forth, moving them round, and then pull your fingers back. Don't strain again. We're not looking to strain or put any undue stress on our arms or our wrists at, at this point. Nice and easy does it. Will he smile? Ooh, not sure yet. I'm not sure it's ready. Not smile time. That's it. Loosen out again. I said I, I'm, I'm assuming you've done your uh, you've done your warm up as well. Your uh, five minutes of cardio. Now we're on to the pull ups and the progressions that uh, that form the pull ups. As I said throughout this, I'm giving you five exercises: two pull, two push, one static, and a hinge. First of the pull up section is the hang. Great for building up grip strength and the arm and, and, and back and shoulder strength to be able to hold that position for a pull-up absolutely essential looking for 30 to 60 seconds before you move on to the next progression Australian rows 8 to 10 reps again foot position here um, not too steep to start with till you can comfortably produce 8 to 10 rows then move your feet forward a little bit as you'll probably see me doing in just a moment nice slow movements nothing jerky it's not about racing it's not about half movements, full reps, keeping that body line nice and straight, engaging the core, keeping the head nice and neutral, that's it. Pulling up towards the chest. Great. Looking good there, boy. Keep it going. That's it, and up we go. And off. Now we're on to negative. Negatives are great, as you'll see throughout this series. Negatives are used extensively. It's the, the reverse or negative part, portion of the exercise. This builds up um, a lot of strength, more strength than you'd use in, in the actual pull-up section. Your muscles are stronger in the negative phase than they are in the positive. So build up to 5 to 10 reps here, um, slowly and control down before you move on to the, the next progression. That's it. Come on, boy, you can do it. Swing it away like that. Yes, extra momentum. So next progression, the top hold. So holding yourself in the top position of the pull-up will develop... A lot of strength, um, the strength required to, to pull you up to, to that point. And we're looking to hold that for, say, 10 to 20 seconds before we move on to the next progression. You can use these progressions together if you like, if you, you want to do the negatives and, and the top hold as part of the circuit, that's great. Now we're going on to the, the resistance band section. The, the first band I'm going to be using is a, a green band, 50 to 130 pounds. That's more than adequate for a guy of my size that's 75 kilos. You might find that's uh, enough for you. If not, you can always get a, a larger band or start on a lower band if it's too much for you. But it makes the pull-up very easy indeed. So you've got the, the, full, the full movement, um, no half measures, no part moves. You could even start, to be honest, using these from the very get-go if you feel confident enough. Um, you can see that I'm moving above the bar there. My body line is straight and my feet and legs are forward of the bar when I do that, trying to engage that uh, or simulate that, that hollow hold position. Keeping the body straight and taut while you're doing these exercises makes the, um, the whole exercise a lot easier. Um, it's, it's always that way. If it's something's loose, it's more difficult to pick up than if it's solid and rigid. So. The purple resistance band at 35 to 85 pounds. Um, again, we're looking to get to eight reps comfortably before we move on to the next band. Again, getting your chin right above the bar. If the more observant above you, 
you might see that in this we have uh, a little chalk bag to the right hand side and if your um, your bar is slippery use a little bit of chalk makes it much easier i've got quite a thick bar there a uh, couple of inches um, i'm trying to improve my grip strength but it, it makes it more difficult to do the pull up you're better off with a, a bar that's about a one and a quarter inches uh, to one and a half inches that's 38 millimeters 42 millimeters um, that makes gripping the bar easier and so you can see here with the, the black resistance band 25 to 70 pounds again looking to do eight reps before you move on to the next band it's all about getting good form not rushing it pulling up fast and then lowering yourself whoops not as slow as I want to there um, what we're trying to do is, is uh, simulate good form but also prepare ourselves for future exercises like the muscle up and then finally we have the the red resistance band the easiest to put your feet into it's got the least resistance you might find the other bands more difficult so just practice with those carefully and again pulling up past the bar nice long arms sort of resting at the bottom so we get the full movement up not trying to use any bounce to help us in this one and just the, the the resistance of the band going up to bring us above the bar and that's great hey you got him you're getting this marky oh a oh, little bit of a wobble there had to readjust my grip haven't obviously haven't used enough chalk at that point uh, but that's okay here we are pulling it through and uh, complete on that one and then finally we move on to the the full pull up again as part of the circuits look to do between five and ten reps before you look to make this more difficult by adding weight possibly in a, a, a form of a weighted vest or maybe a kettlebell hang around your waist or something like that but again concentrate on good form fast up moderately slow down it's about strength this it's not about reps and speed of, of reps okay this is what this this, this section of calisthenics is all about so doing pull-ups you can do exactly the same thing doing chin-ups chin-ups with your your palms facing towards you and this works um, slightly different muscle set it concentrates more on the biceps and the, and the, the inner back muscles um, as opposed to the wider back muscles uh, of the pull-up and so you can do all of the progressions that we've done for the pull-up to do chin-ups so chin-ups form one of the the five exercises that we're going to be doing so um, whatever you see I've done with the pull-ups you can re recreate with um, with the chin-ups so resistance bands the the, the negatives um, the top hold etc and the hang they're all valid for chin-ups as well and there you see we're looking to do five to ten reps of unassisted chin-ups as part of the circuit once you've done that you can start adding weight again keep the feet forward keep your body taut everything engaged as you pull up trying to pull the chin above the bar that's it many of these things that you'll see us doing uh, relate across the board to all of the exercises the use of the bands and the way that we use the negatives etc so now we make it a little bit more difficult for ourselves with with pull-ups by going on to rings rings are more unstable than bars so they you can still use bands to to assist you here here you can see me tying it on one end and then looping the band through the middle two fingers of my hand before I if I hold the bar and I'm going to be doing doing it from a seated position because it's pretty pretty almost impossible to jump up while the, the rings are at a point where you're you're, um, you're, you're fully standing fully standing up or the, or, or the rings are above your head so from this point here you sit into the band get your your wrists your, your grip correct not not a, a false grip as I was going into there originally just an ordinary pull-up grip and then again slow control movements try not to use any bounce at the bottom to assist you all right just use the strength of the bar oh you can see my partner on the right hand side she's she's going for it on the elliptical while I'm uh, positioned here, here my, my feet are, are put more into the uh, into a cross position makes it slightly easier as opposed to having them out long you can adjust your foot position depending on what's uh, equal or, or, or best for you that's great and slowly down just to do a little bit of a negative on that one there oh she's going for it isn't she fantastic shows that uh, I do have a partner and she's into fitness too so there you go all you naysayers <laughs> right the seated pull-ups without any assistant bands so again from this point here with your legs out straight so that we're getting into used to uh, pulling up in an opposite position you find that more difficult bring your knees up and just pull up um, with your knees uh, nearer to the body 
and you can flutter the rings just to make it look a bit fancier if you want to. I don't think there's anything uh, particularly adding to the uh, the exercise by doing that, but hey, just allows me to talk a little bit longer. Now, I'm just moving things around a little bit so you can see me now doing an example of the, the angle pull-up, which is nearly full, full length, allows your body to be straighter and uh, for you to um, have a longer arm pull. That's right, so you can go down even further on that one. Fantastic. And up and down again, body, legs out, just front of you straight, all, the whole core engaged, and uh, off he goes. Well, now on to the next one, dips. The next, the next exercise, so this is now in the pushing section, a pushing one, and then all progressions that make up the dip. First of all, the static hold. Okay, um, we're not going to be holding it in uh, this position with your, your shoulders depressed and your arms down. No, no, no. He says, no, that's not the way. Upward. So push your shoulders upright. That's right. Lock out and then bring your legs forward. Um, point them forward again. That solid hollow hold position, that core position. Engage the core in that one. And try and hold this for 30 to, to 60 seconds before you, you move on to the next progression. It's getting your arms and shoulders used to... Um, or strengthening them up in preparation for, for the dips. Now, the next progression, grounded dips. Your feet are actually on the floor here, but you're not using your legs in any way. So all of the effort is coming from your arms. Just pretend your legs are, are numbed. I wouldn't say paralyzed, but say numbed from the, uh, oops, got a fly there, get out of the way. Uh, numbed from the, uh, from the waist downwards. So all of the effort is coming from pushing up from the arms, keeping your elbows in, that's it. Okay, what's he doing now? Yes, you're fine, mate. Yeah, that's it, great. That's it. As you remember what you have to do now. Feet forward, that's it. So this makes it slightly more difficult by bringing your feet forward. Again, you're not using your legs in any way, shape or form to help you. It's purely on the arms, but because they're out in front of you, it adds a little bit more resistance and makes it uh, that much more difficult to do. Another progression for you if you want to stage this out. We are looking at doing this from absolutely never having done dips before. All of these exercises are, are aimed at people that have never done um, sort of any form of, of calisthenics before. So you can start from this the, the very the very beginning lower level and you should be able to complete even the first exercise at least and move on from there. So again look to get eight to ten reps at the, the distance of, of the uh, the feet that you have before moving on to the, the next progression. That's sunshine. Fantastic. And now we're doing negatives. We did negatives with pull-ups. Now you can see you did negatives on dips as well. So start in the top position and lower yourself as slowly and as controlled as you can. That's it. And keep performing those for eight to 10 reps again. Now you can see to either side of me, I've got um, a, a, a medicine ball, which I've, I've promptly broken as I've slammed it and slipped it into. I now use it for, for bear crawls. It adds a bit of five kilograms of weight to each hand just to Add a little bit more. So the next, the next thing that you can go on to is band assisted dips. So you can use one of the four bands that we've got, the red, the black, the green, and the purple. Starting off um, with the, the green, very well done Mark, pointing them out, very clever boy. There we go. So wrap the uh, one end around the dip bar, 50, 100, 230 pounds of, of tension. That's quite a wide range, isn't it? But that's what they said on the, on the spec. And if you pull it taut, uh, rather than slipping it through your fingers and hold it there, it gives you um, even more tension than having it slack, which means for someone who, of, of my light stature, as I said, whoops, 75 kilograms, and just be a little bit careful when you get on these. It can be a little bit stable to start with, so just make sure that the surfaces that you're going off are, are pretty solid and stable. Um, you can see I'm not getting much movement there with the knees going down. So, yeah. It's looking. It's not looking too bad. They're looking a bit like one of those dipping dogs. You know the ones that dip their head into the water as they go down. But anyway, you can see that the arms are bending down. The triceps and shoulders and up so are are being engaged. So I am getting some benefit out of that. So look towards do, doing eight to ten reps before you move on to the purple band. Again, this time I'm gonna. Am I rapid root through the two fingers? Yeah, come on. Yeah, that's it. That's it. So I get yeah, indeed. Well done, Mark. You got it. That's it. Well done. Excellent boy. Excellent. Now get yourself on carefully, try not to fall over. That's it. I don't want to make a mess in front of the audience now. <laughs> well done. Keep going. Now you can see I've got more dip going on there. Um, my knees are going further down, at least six to eight, maybe 12 inches. Mm, it's a bit of a difficult one. Oh, looking at old money, 56 years old. 
could do that in centimeters, I suppose. Uh, <laughs> I was around when it came in back in the 70s. There we go, keep it going. That's it, dipping away. Fantastic exercise, upper body exercise. A staple of calisthenics. And now we go on to the, to the black band. You can see how these bands are really useful tools. You can use them in a variety of ways, different exercises. So once you've made the purchase, you've got plenty of use out of them. 25 to 70 pounds, again, looking at eight reps before we move on. So we're looking at doing um, these five exercises that I'm showing you today in a, in a sort of circuit. Um, going from push, pull, push, pull, hinge, static, you'll see that from the L set, and then repeating that, you know, two, three, even four times, depending on your level of fitness and, and what you're looking to achieve. Don't overdo it though to start with. Try the one circuit first. And then finally onto the, onto the red band, very little resistance on this, 15 to 35 pounds. You're pretty much there if you're using the red band. Uh, it's just a matter of time before you can knock out one or two on your own without the band. Once you've got up to eight reps, you're, you're there. You can go on to doing it unaided, unassisted. That's it. The sun's gone in, but he's still dipping away. Keep going. That's how we operate over here in Blighty. Now the full dips. Okay, knees are up because I don't want to get bang my legs into the floor. Um, five to ten reps controlled. Again, see how far the shoulders are going down past the point of the elbow. The reason I'm going down that far is because I'm, I like to have a full range of mo movement and it also translates well to future exercises like rings, muscle ups, etc. Um, there we go. And just from another angle, just so you can see that, how far down I'm going, almost touching my shoulders down to the bar itself. That's it, head nice and neutral. Oh, and it gives me the opportunity to show off the, the dragon tat. And on the other side, we've got the, the tiger tat. Dragons and tigers, what film does that remind you of? Yes, indeed. Uh, favorite animal, and I'll see dragon relating to uh, my favorite ever martial artist. So once you've completed it on the bars, you can take your dips, once you've, once you've mastered the bars, you can take them onto the rings. The, the rings are more difficult because they're unstable, as I've said before, um, and this, using the bands, probably you want your rings a little bit lower than that to start with, and uh, it makes it more difficult, obviously flexibility issues if your rings are too high, um, and use the bands then to aid you doing um, ring dips. Um, if you're wondering how you get your, your rings level, you can see the spirit level to the right there, that's what I use to get my rings level, um, so I know that, they're, that so I've not got disparity between the left and right arm when I'm dipping. Some people have little marks on their on their uh, on their straps, which makes it uh, much easier. And then we go to to full ring dips, and I've got RTO. That means rings turned out. Again, once you've done the dip all the way down shoulder level, then turn the rings outward. That starts to build up the strength and, and uh, in the ligaments, tendons, musculature for when you're doing exercises such as the, as the planche. It's um, a standard gymnastic type move which I've picked up along the way. I'm not quite getting the full. RTO there, but it's uh, it's not a bad effort. Let's just put it that way. Keep going. There you go. Well done, Mark. Okay, so that's two, two, three exercises out of the way now. On to the L-sit and the various progressions that make up the L-sit. And we'll be going through each of those. So the first one is the study help. Not with your, remember, not your shoulders dip, shoulders up and feet out in front of you. Very similar to what how you start off with on the dip to build up the strength in, in the shoulders and the core. You're starting to use the core here with that slight angle. Uh, pointing your toes is uh, is optional. It's been pointed out a couple of times to me before. Do you not point your toes, Mark? Well, yes, you can if you want to. That's totally up to you. We're not in competition here. Anyway, on to the, the next progression. A partial knee raise even. Um, I've got my knees at around 60, 70 degrees. You can have them even lower than that, depending on, on your, your core strength level. But push your shoulders up again, lock out your arms, and hold that position there for 15 to 20 seconds before you move on to the, the next progression. That's it. L-sits are fantastic for, for core work, and they're, and they're so useful for all sorts of transitional moves, etc. Now we have our, our knees up at 90 degrees. Um, that's, that is just a, a, a tad more difficult. Um, and holding that again for 15 to 20 seconds 
um, before you move on to the next progression. You could even mix and match these throughout your circuits between the different sets at different, different levels. And now what we're going to be doing is swapping our legs out, in and out, alternate legs. This gets you used to the idea of having um, uh, your legs out as opposed to tucked in at the 90 degree. It just makes it that much more difficult. 10 to 20 reps, I'd say more 10 to be honest, um, before you move on to attempting the next one. And that's keeping the legs out for um, five to 10 seconds and then swapping them over. Again, you're, you're partially, you're, all, you're halfway, three quarters of the way there now to, to an L sit. So having got to this point, you can be pretty confident you're gonna be able to do the L sit for appreciable length of time. And then just to, to add a little bit of variety and get you um, used to assuming that full position, you can swing into the L sit and uh, you can try and hold it, but I'm not doing here, but I'm just showing you the, the, the initial start, the easy part of that. Just swing yourself in it. This is also a, a good move to, as part of the planch training as well, getting that core um, sort of toughened up, so tightened up. And then we move into the, the full L set. Um, we're looking to hold this between 50 to 30 seconds as part of the uh, as part of the circuit. Once you've done this on bars, you can again translate this to, to rings, which again being the unstable surface makes it slightly more difficult. You can even do them hanging. So now we get onto, onto press ups and all the progressions associated with the press ups. Um, in the press-ups, I like to, to, to say that uh, I want you to be in that position, the press-up position at all, throughout all progressions. There's no point going off your knees because you're not engaging your core. And if you think about it, a press-up is a moving plank. So we want to be in that sort of, um, that long progression or that long, sorry, that long position, the straight position, the straight body position through every progression that we do. And again, negatives once again, see how useful these negatives are? Start in the, the upright position, hand, shoulder width apart, sort of fingers facing forward, can be slightly turned out depending on, on what's most comfortable for you. Elbows in when you go down, um, backside slightly up, um, keeping that core tight as you just drop down. And do again, eight reps of these, slowly dropping down. Make sure you've got a cushion or something soft underneath you in case you, you fall, at, fall at the end, don't you? breaking your nose or, or damaging your pretty faces. There we go. And the next thing you go on to is um, either a box, table or chair. This is um, obviously taking the wall and the, the negatives one stage further. Uh, make sure again that the surface that you're, you're pressing off is um, stable. This looks a little bit wobbly, Mark. Uh, I think your choice of implement or surface is a, a little bit dodged, but we'll go for it for now. There we go. Turn it around. Whoa, well done, mate. Excellent. Krypton factor. You got it. There we are. Nice and lined up. Got to keep it pretty and perfect. And down we go. Again, we're looking for, for reps of about eight. Eight reps there. Um, nice and controlled. That's it. Well done, boy. Okay, and final one off the lowest position. This box here, very useful little plyo box. I made it myself as I've done a lot of these things. 20, 16 and uh, 12 inches. There we go. I could even do a video if you want. Uh, making that thing, if you're at all interested, let me know. So again, nice controlled movements all the way down, full range of movement, trying to get the chest to the box. And then we go on to the, the, the full press up itself. Okay, make sure there's no ants, worms, etc. below you as you do this and stick your nose in the grass. But again, you can see I've got that straight body line position, no sagging bottoms or, or backs, lower backs. Keep that core tight, full range of movement, up, down. None of these half quarter press ups, pointless. Um, we're building strength here, all right? So it's about full range of movement, movement, not moment, movement. Well done, well done, boy. Now, just to, to make things, uh, um, to mix things up a little bit, takes the, the strain off the wrist using press up handles because your, your, your wrists are in a neutral position, gripping onto something. Um, especially as you, you know, you're getting older, you might find using press up handles um, easier. It will also allow you to get to a, a larger range of motion. So you, so you can go down further past the point of the ground, even bringing your chest past that point. So it gives you an extra couple of inches or so push down and then to make it even more difficult we raise our feet onto something solid that's it and again 
down we go. So what we're trying to do here is get to the point where we get, we're building up the musculature and, and, and the, the, the range of movement to enable us to move towards doing handstand press-ups and, and much more advanced moves, just building ourselves up slowly through this, these range of progressions. I mean, press-ups are endless and they're beautiful. I mean, you can do them any and everywhere. There's so many different varieties and variations. I'm only just touching upon it here. These are, these are the basics. And again, you can keep raising your feet up and up and up, making it more and more difficult. Uh, still keeping that body line straight. That's it. And uh, is he going to turn it over? Yeah, finally. Onto the, the 20 inches. Is that, is that going to be okay? Yeah, yeah. Not, not going to fall off this, are you? Oh, I do hope not. Are you insured? Yeah, okay. There we go. And down. Give it a couple of three marks just to show that it can be done. There you still life in the old dog yet. And that's it. Even though the box is wobbling. Good man. Okay, again, full range of mo mo movement. Um, good. Yeah, that's it. Done it. And then you can take it on to the next level once you've done those that particular progression by going on to the rings. Rings, again, an unstable, um, very unstable environment or, or bits of kit, I should say. And you, and you can see I'm turning the rings out again, um, utilising or getting myself ready for, for more uh, advanced moves later on building up the, the strength in the tendons and the ligaments therein. And again, full range of, of, of movement all the way down. And just like you did off the ground, you can make it more difficult by raising raising your feet. Now we're getting to circus acts here, aren't we? Oh my goodness, what's he gonna be doing next? There we go. So these are the things that you can uh, you can uh, build up to, aspire to, etc. Even at my stately age. There we go. And you might want something uh, soft underneath. I seem to be headbutting the uh, the decking there. But all good, no accidents. Safe once more. Oh, even a half a little smile there. Fantastic. Well, there you have it, guys. Five great foundational exercises and all the progressions that go to make them up. Just what you need to start your calisthenics journey on. I hope you've enjoyed watching the video. I know I've enjoyed making it. And if you have, why not subscribe to my channel so that you can get future notifications of more videos that I'll be releasing real soon. If you're interested in purchasing the type of kit that I've used throughout the video, I've provided links in the description so that you can go directly and buy that online. Also, feel free to leave any comments you might have on any questions about the video or other things that you might want answering and I'll do my best to get back to you as soon as possible. You might also be interested in fast tracking your calisthenics journey. If that's the case why not get in contact with me at fitnessgeezer.com. If you're in the London area we could train one-on-one -on -one. and if you're further afield we can do that online. Just contact me and we'll discuss. To sum up remember this is a journey. Make sure that you Take the progressions gradually, slowly and safely. Don't progress or move on to the next progression until you've completed the required number of reps with good form. Remember, this is not a race. You don't need to compete against anyone except yourself. In that way, you'll never be disappointed. Okay, take care now, enjoy the journey and I hope to see you back real soon. Bye-bye.